been really no point for me to spend another five years looking after my daughter Sally when all it needed was another six months to finish my degree and I had to put her with a child. Why manager. did you get pregnant at that time then? <laughs> I was with the man that I was with for five years. No, 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 that's a good question. Yeah. And, and you're planning and everything else. Planning. You're planning your career in your five years and but six months. Why didn't you plan the child? Some because you can't plan for. Some things you cannot plan for. No, I was talk, 23. Don't, don't take us under family planning. No, I was 23 <laughs> when my husband died and I was left with an 18-month-old child and a four-year-old. I had to go to work if I was going Wouldn't to give my children any quality of life. Home? I had no family. I'm saying, wouldn't you have rather been allowed oh, to have a payment I would to have stay at home? To stay exactly. home, but circumstances sometimes dictate otherwise, Definitely. and you cannot generalise and say positively you should stay home, positively you're allowed to work. I don't. I don't condemn work. anybody the, that has to go to work to pay their bills. In 1999, we should have choice. Once a time. We're in a new century. We should have choice. Mm. You know, it's, it's what about my the mother didn't the have any choice. She had thirteen kids. Alison. We have choice. We Ask any have of it. the children that are looked after by a nanny who they would rather look after them, their nanny or their mum. No, my no. Can I just had a I... baby minder and they adored. Yeah, her. Would, would they rather your baby me. minder be there than they you? Were happy you with oh, you're, you're you're uh, you just her. asked me to ask yeah. the children. Mm. Who were looked after by a we nanny or a childminder? Mm -hmm. Who would they prefer to have? Mm -hmm. I think I'm actually sitting alongside someone, aren't I? Well, I'd like to start off by saying I'm a working mother, and I believe, I agree entirely with Emma that everyone should has has a choice to work as they want. And this idea that mother of mothers looking after their, home, their children at home is a real fifties ideal. That is a very tiny little blip in history. So it's all going and, to and, and, sort of and look what children are doing and, now. But I'll tell you, when I grew up, my mother. Was, it was a, is a doctor. My parents were doctors, and my mother was determined to work, which was unusual in those days. And she fought against prejudice against women working to do that. She hired an, a nanny who was came with glowing, glowing references from the matron of a major yes. teaching hospital. The woman was brilliant at running the house. Her friends envied her having this amazing woman who ran the house. There were six children, six of us under ten, and my mother worked partly at home, and nobody thought that this woman, that people were sadistic towards children, that this woman hit us with ha hair brushes, coat hangers, pokers, she held our heads under the water when she was washing our hair, she told me she, I had leukaemia and was going to die within five years and my parents wouldn't tell me because they were doctors and they knew they didn't want me to be upset for the, my last years of my life. She told my brother he had, a, he had, a, he had an enlarged spleen, she told my sister she had ca the, the, the hernia in her groin was cancer. She woke my eight-year-old brother up in the middle of the night to tell him that the police had come to arrest him for being so naughty. This is and, and her name wasn't Miss Smith, was it? She wasn't. And I tell you, she. My, I tried to tell. I, t I tried to tell my mother for, at an early age, but it's very frightening to tell on an adult. Mm -hmm. And, and my, to be believed. And well, in, to, and in you, the, certainly and I was afraid in those of being, days, the repercussions. Yeah. This woman was but very again, violent. Again, it, and it, just, yes, it, she it, stayed. But it, it, this, this back gets forward. back. This gets back again to the parents not taking enough precautions when they choose to get. No, listen to me. There is nowhere in the British Isles that you can't get to within 24 hours. And if I am going to employ a nanny, or if anyone's going to employ a nanny, you can take a day off work, child you can minder. travel to the hearing. I'm sorry, child I think that you can travel... from a matron of a, a major no, 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 London teaching disagree. hospital no, is... No, I disagree. Well, there is no reference like mm. going and meeting the last employers of your nanny. Well, she, she, that was the matron, was the last that's employer. That's still worth oh, nothing. Um, yeah. Did she speak to the children? At the end of the day, if you're going to go to somebody's house and travel through the UK and vet the house and vet the family and vet everything else, if they have psychological problems, if they are disturbed, you'll still never find out. So should you put your child? So should you put them with a stranger? You can't generalise. As far as I am concerned, as no, far as my family are concerned, we had a nanny, and we had the need to have a nanny for a short period of time during the course of the day, and it suited our needs. We had some superb nannies. We had one bad apple, but you can't generalise and say you can't and you never should, no. or you should do all the time. There's Every family is different. It's always it's a first offence. Yes, it's exactly. What are you saying? Well, I mean, they could have a glowing reference, references, yeah, I mean checks, um, whatever procedures they go through. Um, to me, it doesn't mean nothing. There's always a first offence. There is with yeah. parents. Yeah. 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 parents. There is, yeah. But a lot of parents, all right, it's unfortunate for those that have got to go out to work, that have got mortgages, mm -hmm. that can't afford to live without going to work. But though, for those that, that have got the choice, that's what I don't agree with, because 
Well, you've well, got well, the choice. Sad if you're saying that, that, that there's a, Emma, what you seem around. to be saying Emma, is that there's a risk to... with every single nanny that they're going to harm your child. It's a no, 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 and I was very lucky. I had a friend's mother came in to my house and minded the child. And That's not stranger, is it? Well, I didn't know her oh. originally. Sorry, she was my fri point. a friend yeah. that I had met at antenatal class. Right. So I didn't know her very well, mm -hmm. but um, she said her mother was looking for a job and she wouldn't mind minding my child for me. So I was very lucky. That's the best but way that, to do it. Let, let it, finish, yeah. it was wonderful. I mean, she was in my house and there was another little boy six doors away. He came to the house as well. They were both six-month-old babies. And they, they were like friends together. And then, after I had my uh, second child, I couldn't afford uh, to put both of them into uh, a nursery. So I decided then, right, it would be better for me to stay at home. And perhaps now, um, I mean, I've had a third one, and I'm at home all the time now. It, it's great now to be at home with mm -hmm. them. And I think pro possibly mm. I mellowed with age. Did you miss out? <laughs> I, I don't think I missed out. I, I, I suppose I, I might have missed out with the first, but I made up for it with the second and the third. But the first missed out then? No, well, no, I don't think so. He's a very happy child. Yeah. If you go, Emma, Emma, I've you're very, vis you're very vociferous, <laughs> Mrs. Consultant, I've MP, done, brain done. surgeon, everything else you want to be. Listen I'm to me. Listen home. to me. I'm, I'm going to give, pounds. <laughs> give you a million pounds. I'm going to give you a million pounds. Would you give it in trust to this stranger? Would you give it to a stranger and say, "Look after that for me"? There's a million pounds in notes there. This nanny. I certainly couldn't minder. look after a million pounds. I'd have to find somebody to do it for but me. But There's no question. But, but you're, you're, you're deliberately misunderstanding no, what I'm I saying. Don't think I am. Your child is worth you more than a million pounds. Your child is worth I'm more saying. than a million pounds. I have pound. done it. Why I would have... you trust your child to a stranger? I did. But you wouldn't trust a million pounds to a stranger. But I just said I would. I, I did trust my child. I have had two fantastic nannies who were wonderful, amazing girls. I was very concerned to check out their references and I accounted for every minute of their lives until they came to me, which meant that they were both very young. You can't be 100 There are always sure. going to be you people. Be 100 I, was as sure. I was as safe as I could possibly be. As my, ch my children thrived, I have no doubt about can't, it. I think a good nanny can we really some, help. We can we're not either. just talking about nannies, no, we're talking no, about child minors too, who, who, are the, ma who are the majority, let us yeah. say, you know, when we're talking about all the people in Birmingham and Liverpool and Merseyside. That with child minds. What would your child say? Let me get Margaret into it. Can we get some, some agreement before you all fall out? What's happening? Oh, we, 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 <laughs> we don't want agreement. <laughs> We'd have nothing to talk about if we had agreement. We don't have a lot of not. Oh, I was just going to say we have Are a lot of nodding heads saying yes. It's the new Labour, that. A lot of nodding heads saying yes. The reality. The, the reality is people want choice. Some people want to stay at home and look after their children, maybe till they're five, maybe till they're 16. Others want to go out to work. Others need to what go out to work. What about the child's others, choice? Who wants just his mum with them? Let, others <laughs> need to go out to work. And the other reality out there is that more and more women are working. We now have uh, over half of mothers with children under five either work part-time or full-time. That's the reality. We also know that most of the jobs that are going to be created over the coming period are actually going to go to women. So what we all ought to be saying is we want choice. Absolutely. We want choice for everybody, but we want to make sure that where women do leave their children with a childminder, in a nursery, with a nanny, or whatever it is, it's that safe. it's affordable, it's what safe, the and it's high quality. Alison, Alison, I want Alison. Alison, what about the choice, Alison, 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 Alison. Alison. About the choice of a child? Well, if the child, if you ask most of these children, I'm pretty sure if you said who would you want to be with, mummy or nanny, I they would want their mum. What the child? I, I mean, it's that's. Well, then I'd be very that's sad because so my right. child would rather want a nanny than me. I would be extremely that sad. That is an unanswerable that. question. You have to say that's You've an unanswerable. It's a pretty critical it's one, isn't though. Isn't there any here that's been brought up by a nanny? If you wanted to go to school or stay at home, what would they say? Oh no, because we know what's best for them. We know that's what's best for them. You're talking to Margaret. That's not the same thing. Surely they're learning. They're getting educated. Can't you can is what you society Emma, should be honouring. Surely raising a family is the most important. Mm -hmm. It's yes. as important as being a surgeon, it's as important as being a doctor. My children, if I hear my... 
More important. More important. More important. My, if I do a good job, hopefully, with my three children... It is. Don't look at me like that, Jane. It is more important. I'll present to society three fully rounded human beings. That's yeah. way too important to leave to inexperienced yes. People. Yes, to an experienced in, people. I was an experienced as a young mother. I'm, I'm a I was presented with a child. I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. I would have considered myself Talk inexperienced. Mm -hmm. I should have had but it child depends finding who you class. But that depends had... who you choose as a nanny. No, no, what what I'm she's I'm saying is, no, no. she's the mom. Child... She nurtures and loves them. But she I, understands I was... and she's going to bring them. And she, that's the biggest. It is. It is. It's the I most, agree. It's the most brother, important. Hang on, Beverly, listen to her, please. It's the most important job in the world. And she's bringing up and producing these three well-rounded people, more important than any other job, yes, absolutely, is, right? Why would you then want to entrust these precious things mm. in the hands of somebody else who can't because have the same love, the same sustenance, but you're wrong the same when you care? Say that. Because you're wrong when you say that. You're I'm, wrong. Because I'm a, on, mother. Please, I'm a mother. I've got a 22-year-old son and I've got a 15-year-old daughter. And when they grew up, what? I wanted to work for son, children. Did you say? A 22-year-old son who now lives in Australia. Oh. He's a very well-rounded <laughs> person. He emigrated to Australia when he was 18. When you look after somebody else's children, you are... <laughs> yes, you are paired say. by proxy. And, no, and I, th I think my point I was trying to make was, first of all, I was presented with a, a, a child. I had no experience of, chi uh, of child rearing. I would have appreciated in school having been uh, taught parenting classes. I oh, should I have done. I would, I would have liked to have done a first aid court. I would have liked to have had oh. education in dealing with young children. I think we are all nannies, parents alike. Badly, if completely uneducated in, the, in dealing with some young children, and I think the question is not whether nannies are experienced. There are some mothers and some parents who are inexperienced. Yes, so the yes. whole, it should be a, such a it's such a terribly important yes, topic that it should be treated as part of everyone's education. Um, I think it's amazing that you think you're such a well-rounded person yeah, that you can bring your children up very well-rounded. Yeah. I have now, having had a very bad experience, which I will talk about later. Um, a wonderful nanny who compliments my personality and gives my children the calmness that I would love them to have to make them into well-rounded people. I have to work, but so I've chosen somebody who can give them a little bit of something my husband and I don't have. We're both creative people. We want a little bit of peace in the house. That's going to help them in life. Don't you think that's a little bit selfish? Oh, you have yeah. children <laughs> and you want peace. The two very well likely <laughs> don't mix. I mean, having children is the worst of times and it's the best of times, and you must accept that the I'm, two must go together. Who wants the peace? You or the kids? Oh, for the kids. You want the peace. And for me. Oh, and the kids. But we're talk, we're talking me. about, we're talking about, we're we're a great I'm emphasis really upon really nannies, but we're also talking about childminders, Pam. If you're actually going to have to, for whatever reason, because you want to, because you need to, because of circumstances, put your child in the care of a stranger, someone else, and you put them in the care of childminders, can we be satisfied that they are actually in hands with, of an organisation, of an individual that's regulated, inspected, safe? Yes, you can, provided, of course, you use a registered childminder. And we have the Children Act 1989, which sets um, guidelines and standards to protect children. The whole, the whole point of that act is that the welfare of the child is paramount. So that in, in Lewisham, what we've actually done, we have split the registration and inspection and the follow-up. Of child minders. Of child minders and nurseries and play groups into two separate sections. And therefore, once the registration inspection unit have satisfied themselves that this is a fit person and has fit premises, then they come into the support area of um, the education department and we are about ensuring that from the beginnings where people start, everyone starts at a different point, that there is training available, that we have support for those people. There are childminder drop-ins run by a voluntary organisation. And there is a toy library which lends toys to those children. They're regulated, the trained, inspected. That sounds Beautiful, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, my own experience was that my my three-month-old baby at the time was with a registered childminder. Yes, she was a brilliant lady. You know, I was absolutely happy. But my point is, had my child been at a stage where he was crawling, creeping, the environment wasn't suitable for him. Um, it was unsafe. So. In a nutshell, I no longer used um, well, a child. Well, you're saying the regulations didn't so actually work. They, it didn't work, and if 
um, the government could actually introduce spot checks. Yes, they do all their um, checks. All your regulations in training, so it's safe, Pam. But still sort of pop in on the, you know, but on the off happen. chance. It they should do happen. Do, they, does they it? They should it do that. Happen. If you're registered, safe, you, know, you should have spot checks. Well, you should have whilst, the spot checks. Do they? they sh yes. Minder, it's actually yes, gone yes. through, yes, gone through all well, the they're all saying, oh, you're they're surrounded they're by, yes, we do here. You the premises wasn't safe on well, a registered child in, yeah, in the sense that, you know, perhaps on the day that all these checks were well, done and registered, no, listen to me, listen to me, the, um, you know, the furniture could be all moved out of the way, this luscious space would be, you know, available for mm -hmm. the child, and then, you, you know, you've what gone away. You what did you say to her? Well, she was a registered childminder. Yeah, so she moved the, the furniture and well, you don't say anything? Well, but she's if a registered childminder. And the fact that my child, and the fact that my child wasn't actually nice. crawling or creeping or anything, mm -hmm. I felt, fortunately, that he was safe for that age group. Had he been five months, six months, then obviously he wouldn't well, have been safe. Well, it sounds like you wasn't very happy. But I tell you I, something. I did leave. We, when we have a check, they don't just check your house. There is a list, must be about... Turn around. There must be Turn about 30, face, 30, 30, 36, 37 or 8 things that we've got to do. They don't just check the house. They, when I had my last inspection a couple of weeks ago, the inspector came along with a file that thick, mm -hmm. which I didn't actually know they kept files, but she had what, a file. You had a lot of complaints, did you? Very first application. It, how, how often do they come back? They do come they come back do every they? year. No. Well, that's only a year. What happens in the year? No, What happens in the year? It needs to be spot checked. Well, so that and an social inspector services are very big. They have a in, wide area matter, to look at. Now, when they come, they thoroughly do a check. You don't time. have one smoke time. alarm. You don't have two. They've got to be linked. Well, who's to say that you don't to, take them off? You've got to have your... Uh, after, after, how can you... How can you... One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Smoke alarms that are linked together. Well... Miss, I'll move on from smoke alarms. You're talking about... Hang on, hang on, my love. I had a situation when my, when my children were little, my son went um, to a childminder and when I phoned the local authority for a list, they sent me through the post four pages of names and addresses of childminders. Now, I've worked with children before I had children myself, so I was able to make a good decision on the childminder that I wanted for my child, but I think that if I, I never had that experience, you know, as a, a mother, I, what, you never gave me no support just this list through the post. And some of the childminders, they weren't even working anymore as childminders. What about so the childminders um, you went to? Were they well, the childminder, I was very fortunate that I got a good childminder. But like I said, because of the experience I've had of working with children before I had my own, gave me a good judgment. But you know what, you know what, if can I, I never had can that. I, I'd like to advise people on how, how they find a childminder. They, they contact social services, they're sent a list. Now, a couple of times this happened to me, but unfortunately I didn't have the spaces. I was sent a letter which was photocopied letter to each childminder. Now, if you ever, this is what I advise anyone to do, send a letter to all the childminders in your area. The ones who have vacancies will, will send back. But you, it's your why thing. Do you visit, why, why, why do you send them? Why don't you just go around because and visit Because there's so why many. You, you know, it's there like, so it's like Beverly was saying, like, was it Beverly with the car? Yeah. If you were going around to buy a car, you go through all the newspapers, you spend days at it, yeah, you go and visit yeah, the different right. car showroom, you road test them, don't you? You do yes, all that. Right. Well, if you're doing that, why, why don't you go around every single child that's mind? What I'm Inspect saying. them. They should do. They should go to every child minder. They should make a visit. And before that, and if they like a child minder, if they think, right, this is it, go and see some more. Be 100% mm -hmm. safe. But when they have found a child minder, go and visit the child minder before the date starts. And then. And make your own spot check. Make, uh, make a surprise visit. I've had it done to me. A surprise visit is brilliant. They've walked in, they've seen the atmosphere. The, the, you had no idea they're calling around. Mm -hmm. A woman phoned me um, a couple of years ago. 20 minutes later, she's on my doorstep. I had kids tearing all over the place after school. She walked in, she said, I really like it here. I'm really happy. And she said... She might have got you on a good day. No, <laughs> no, no. no. You know, this every is day, every day is a good it's day. It's a gamble. Yeah, I just can't I just believe they're taking a gamble. question um, to these two ladies. When you found that you wasn't satisfied with that childminder, was there anything that you did about it? It wasn't that did I was satisfied. Back? No, no, one, one, yeah, just one. No, I was able... I was facing um, redundancy from work, 
So I took the redundancy and right. I stayed at home. So you never ever reported that to the no. registration unit? No. Because the thing is, unless we rely on parents to report things, because unless those things are reported, yeah. the registration yeah. Yeah. Uh, unit right. can't do anything and the next parent's going to come along and face the same social, problem as you. Yeah, you and face. social services. Oh, should, there should there be more training? Should there be more training? training. Why, how can you train people? The, well, first aid. That's a very important thing. They get into some first aid certificates through the St John's. They put on courses through different local colleges. Childminders are encouraged to do extra training in different aspects yeah. of child. Encouraged. They're encouraged. Values. How do you yes. Those? Yes. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's a new one. How about their morals and their values? I That's... could be putting my child with somebody that might have racist view, just little comments that I know nothing about all day long, but they are going to be influencing my child in a way that I wouldn't like all day and I could maybe not even know about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, it's the parents should liaison close, just closely the with the child I'm have. Values. And it might be too late. I might find it six months down the road and think, oh, I don't like this person now, but it's too late. Oh, my child's been with them six months. Are we doing enough late. to regulate child mind? And then if we're talking... I mean, the whole emphasis has been in the press on nannies because of the well public Margaret, the well publicised mm. abuses. But in fact, the majority of people who put their children into care, uh, temp child care, are, are using child mind. The lady around the corner who runs it in her own home, who's regulated, registered by the local authority, regulated. Do we actually impose an, a stringent enough? standards upon these people in terms of their training, their, their safety, their morals and their values? I no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Robert, that actually childminders, I think, are a key part of the, uh, of, of the child care infrastructure, and we, should, we do put a lot into them. We have strengthened the registration and regulation, and in fact, we just sent out new guidelines, because there was a, another, a horrible case, if you remember, recently in Norfolk with a childminder who had gone through the registration process, and she still uh, uh, abused the it's easy to get so registered. Hang on, let me go on with no, the other just things on the registration first. Isn't it, I mean, perhaps I'm out of date. I'm just going back on my memory of 10, 12 years ago when I was a member of Parliament, but I thought it was easy. To no, well, anybody could easy. be registered no, as long easy. as you had the basic yes, amenities. You now, now, you're not now, registering the person, yeah. you're registering the facilities. No, as long as they've got tougher. enough <laughs> lavatories no, per no, no, child. No, no. Now it's not. Let me go through. The, it is on. much tougher. Yes. You've got to do a, a much tougher check on the individual. We're establishing what, what we call... What do you check on the individual? Well, health, that's the one health checks, police checks, right. identity checks, past experience right. checks, those sort of things. We're establishing the Criminal Records Agency, which will bring together both the police records and the records held by schools and social services about departments. Oh, no, that's important. Which what is, is a police in, check tell you? Police check? Most police people aren't going to have a All those record. three checks, if you listen, mm -hmm. just listen and I'll mm -hmm. tell you. If all those three mm -hmm. checks, including health and education, will tell you not just whether the person's got a record, but whether in the view of social services and education authorities, they're suitable to work with a child. They won't Can, know, I they won't know me. Can I go on? Can I just go on? To training, because I think training is important, and I think it's an area which has been neglected for too long, and it's one we're trying to address. We're establishing what I call a climbing frame of qualifications, which means that not you don't just do the the uh, the health and safety type things. You do do things about how best to care for the child, child development, how to play with the child, and uh, we are encouraging greatly. I think child minors to work uh, to to get to do more training. And then the final thing, Robert, I want to come back to: no system is fail safe. What we can do is provide the best. You rely the upon the parent. You rely upon these the members of the awkward squad. Uh, so let here, me tell you Al what Alison and Lorraine. Absolutely. Who will go there and say, what are your values? Absolutely. And do I a agree spot entirely change. as a mum myself. Yourself. You're given you a bundle of joy and you haven't a clue however well educated you are when you start off with your first child. And so what we're doing there, I mean, you could ring in today to the internet on the DFE and you'd get guidance as a parent. DFE. Th uh, sorry, the Department of Education. And you would get guidance on the sort of questions and the sort of checks you're doing. And by spring, by April, we'll have a guidance out for all parents just to help them. And it's not just recruiting. It's not just employing the nanny or the child minor or going to the playgroup. It's actually being vigilant all the time when you've got that person look because you as the mum and the dad we're not talking about dads this morning we ought to be but both the mums and the dads well, we've got a dad here we've had a dad, a dad, a dad there is part of it we're talking about putting your child with a stranger can you check on that stranger? Can you tell that the stranger is somebody who has the morals and the values that are acceptable to somebody like Alison, but they also have the training and the experience and the facilities that will ensure your, your child is in a safe, loving, perhaps, too, environment? What if, instead of putting your child in that, in, with a childminder, you're actually bringing that stranger into your own home? 
Jane, you refused to take on to your agency Louise Sullivan. Why? Louise Sullivan contacted our agency at the end of 97, looking for a job as a residential London nanny. We asked her the usual questions we ask over a telephone interview. Previous experience, current experience, um, a recognised childcare diploma, first aid certificate, references which are available to be checked or to be got. Did she drive? Terribly useful for a London nanny. And she met all criteria on that initial thing. So an appointment was made, she came along and had an interview with the consultant who was going to be looking after her, who just happened to be our manager, who was herself in her 40s. Her nanny, um, I'm sorry, her daughter herself was an NEB nanny. So had some insight and also worked for me for a couple of years. And I, all my consultants, have very strong grounding in assessing the individual's needs. It's terribly important to match the right nanny to the right client. Yes. If a nanny's in the wrong so environment, she's her? not going to flourish. So why did you... This girl, she hadn't been in the country very long, which is... Not a huge problem. We do deal with antipedia nannies who come over and they may be doing for one month, six months or a year, depending on their visa, etc. This girl had um, a long-term permission to work here for four years. So that was a legal situation. She was very quiet. She was quite an introverted girl. She didn't have very much confidence. We like to have quite punchy nannies. We like nannies who are quite strong. It's an unfortunate and expression yes, in these circumstances. I know. I thought you might pick up on nanny. that, Robert. But, you know, you, nannies who you have like a nice, strong Augusta. personality, who look as though they can be autonomous and organised and responsible and self-sufficient and all those sorts of words, who are going to give the children a safe environment and also fit in with London. London environment but, but, is but, very, so why did you reject very it? different. Why did you reject it? She was rejected because she didn't give us a good feeling in the agency. So you had a gut feeling of something mm. wrong. And you got that one right. Mm. Are you, do agencies I, If I might just say, she wanted to work as a sole charge looking after a baby. And it's very, very different to being in a family home where mother's around, older children, right. she's supervised, she's part of a lively environment. On your own with a baby, it's very, very isolating. It is very lonely if you have no other friends, extended okay. family, etc. You've got that, you've got that, yeah, you've got you know, well, you here, we put it, we're making a kind of plea okay. mitigation I for know. nannies, what a I terrible know. life they have. But you got that one job. right. Do, 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 do the agencies Not a actually soul charge. impose... She wanted only sole charge. Okay, but do you impose a stringent enough... Uh, are you in stringent in your investigations? I think so, but you can't legislate over the unique, the freak. They don't always get it right, do they? No. The but don't one actually. What I'd you like can't predict. Yeah. What I would like to see, situations. and it's something which the government may want to consider themselves, is that uh, whilst it couldn't be mandatory, it would be nice to see as part of somebody's CV psychological yeah. testing or assessment. Now, our situation was that we had a nanny who was NNEB, she was top of her year, she had excellent references. She was interviewed by us, and uh, my wife and I, both in law, both solicitors, employ about 86 staff, so we're doing interviews all the time. And she came over with personality, with gusto, with confidence, with ability. She was Rolls Royce on paper. And then regretfully, after about two weeks, my wife had a very strange feeling about this young lady, and it culminated one evening when she was out. Purely by chance, she went into her bedroom to actually close the curtains, um, and she noticed on the bed there was a pink diary and uh, she looked at it and criticised she, she can be and criticised she will be, couldn't <laughs> care less. She looked at the diary and inside the diary there was a most horrific um, tirade of uh, abuse and hate and everything else that went with that. And it was a most directed towards directed towards the child, directed towards us, what she'd like to do if she had her way. Can you remind us of one of the expressions she used? Um, she hated that child. She hated this. She'd like to do this. It was quite horrific. Wasn't Satan want to go into was in it somewhere, wasn't Satan it? was also referred to as well. Can I tell you? In my career, I've dealt with more than twenty-five murders. I deal with murderers day in and day out, robbers, rapists. It's my job. When I saw that diary, I was so petrified that my wife and I decided on that night that we would tell her that we were going to re-alarm the house because of a spate of burglars in the area, that the bedroom doors for all the home, for all the house would be, in fact, alarmed. She mustn't open the door on that particular night. We put a chair behind the door, having kept a child in our room on that night. That's how scared we were. 
And following that, the following morning, I said to her, we've read the diary, you're quite inappropriate to work anywhere, I'm taking you back home. Why did you wait overnight? It Why go to all that trouble with the doors? Just say, sorry, go. Because I'm a human being. It was dark and she was a girl. And you dealt with murderers years. and you kept her in overnight. I'm still a human being. <laughs> You're still a human can being. I, Jane, Robert, it's a bit worrying. Robert, did you Jane, tell Jane, anybody? Did you yes, tell did anybody? You tell anybody? I tell the agency, my wife and I tell the agency and wrote to the agency right. and said, you've got a problem on your right. hands with this young lady. Right. That, lady that lady was saying down there about all the checks they go through and the guidelines and everything else. It doesn't matter what checks yeah. you can go through. It doesn't reflect on the person's personality. Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl. Yes, yes. Well, you had a problem too, didn't you? I did have a very big problem because I took in a nanny when my daughter was born. She'll be 24, actually. Um, and after six weeks, she, we found out the nanny had battered her. And she had a massive brain hemorrhage mm. and is to this day severely brain damaged. Oh. Now, this nanny was a fully trained nanny. I took her in because I was going to be working from home. I hadn't started working again after the pregnancy, and it did still happen. Um, I really would like to see the government bring in a nanny register. I, I believe it's imperative, not because one could stop anybody doing something, but yes. perhaps one could stop them working again with children. Uh, this is what um, I would like to see, and Playpen would like to see as well. This, Cheryl, yes. uh, I, I've, met, I've met Cheryl a yes. number of times, and it's a tragic mm. story. And uh, the, we do need to regulate nannies. You exactly. know, we've got it right on child minors, we haven't got it right on nannies. I think a national nanny mm. register just wouldn't work, and it would give you a false sense of security. Okay. Who Who's a nanny? What happens in a situation where the, where the employer and the nanny don't get on? The nanny leaves, the employer complains, and a nanny is knocked off the register unfairly. What well, happens in a terrible situation? Now, that gentleman did, did the ring the agency. Yes, this did is ring. what I did, too. But, but not all do. Often no, they agree. have a bad experience, the nanny leaves, and all they're, do, they're pleased to have got rid of the nanny, and they don't tell anybody. No, we think it's mm. too difficult to provide a national register yeah. which would be accurate, yes. up to date, and give you the cr give you the security you want, which is why we're going for this, for down this avenue mm -hmm. of, uh, in the first instance, on a voluntary basing, getting the agencies to agree to uh, to uh, sort of be registered under a kite mark system. Okay, let me know. We're going back. Let me know. I want to first. Yeah. I'll come back. You've got plenty no, I, of time. I, I think I would just like to say, and I have given this really quite a lot of thought, that. Um, Kite marks, regulation of agencies. I'm sure your agency well, is beautifully well run. Well, regulated um, until the yeah. last government it, yeah. took away our regulation. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, these things are to be welcomed. However, I would say that, um, and as somebody who's employed a nanny via, um, in fact, in one instance, an advertisement, and in one you instance, had a if I could just finish on this subject, sorry, and in, one, and in well, another we, instance, through agencies. And I went to many, many agencies and I found some to be very good and some to be absolutely shocking and what, appalling and what was your, bad what, what in the, was the sense problem that you they had? didn't check references, they didn't pass yeah. them on, they encouraged That's girls right. to lie in interview. Yeah. I can't tell you a catalogue. Yeah. Or they don't Give me an example. Let's, let's well, no, no, an no, no, example please. of a girl who's encouraged to lie. Um, she sent to me for interview and I've told the agency I would like somebody who was prepared to commit to be with the family for a year. I want somebody to become very involved. And during the course of the interview, she said to me, well, actually, I only want to stay for five months, but the agent told me I wouldn't get the job. Yes, that happens all the time. If I said that. Um, um, let me, I want to move, I want someone else. Yeah. This is uh, nothing uh, compared go on, go on. to uh, yeah, your I, experience. I think what you're doing, uh, what you outlined earlier, is, to Margaret, yeah. is um, a very good start. I think that uh, one thing I think is interesting that the people we have here, the experience that happened to me, um, the nanny that I employed that was on a recommendation from a pillar of the church in the village and who uh, came to me with actually with false references, educate the parents that you yeah. cannot even take a recommendation, yeah. you yeah. must, it what is your responsibility. The nanny um, uh, stole our car uninsured and abducted our child for a day. She, she's actually, I mean, this is, uh, what I want to stress is that this is a one-off situation. But you the say girl abducted has been your child, what do you mean you didn't know? Just took off. And she took off. Abducted means without your knowledge without or consent. Without our knowledge or consent, particularly consent, took off. We still don't know where. This girl has been uh, diagnosed with a psychopathic illness. They are terribly clever. I trusted my instincts, um, uh, it, rather like the Beverly Alec case where the, all those mothers made her godmother. You know, these people are very, very clever. 
Um, I mean, I do. Why are you looking like that? Come back, come back to you, come back to you, Lorraine. I was going to say, this is just the the one job in the world, but it doesn't matter how many qualifications you've got, how many pieces of paper you've got, the only qualification for looking after a child is the fact that you love them and you know them. Yes. Not for five minutes or five days, I'm talking about 20 years, not for five, I can't believe you're... I, I am in a very privileged position insofar as I, I have... Well, first of all, I have to work, that's not terribly privileged. What, have to work? But I have to work. What, what for, to, to pay your bills or to go... I, I, have, I need to work, I need to work. You're just going to have to accept that, I'm not going to give you a financial mm, history right. of my family. Um, I I, I actually have to work, but I'm in the home. I'm very lucky. It, it's a rare position. You're saying it's a one-off. There's three I'm in this room we've heard of ten the, minutes. One the, there, the one there, one there. But I think in this day and age, you come please. here and She's say ever. that the whole world is wrong. I'm sorry. I, it's well, not, but I'm talking about my wrong. child, and I'm not do prepared to take parents, any chances. Oh, I do give you them have, the best, and I give them me. I don't give them second best. But do you have respite from your direct family living near you? I mean, is your mother nearby? Respite? Why does she need respite? I don't think... Why do you need respite? I don't think... You're talking... Hang on, half the... Half the... How many of With you, that, you I want respite, say? do you get the chance of respite? All the people on the estates no, outside of Liverpool, what are you, they're, they're mothers, they're yeah, dealing work. with their kids, well, five kids, they haven't got children. a nanny, they, they can't they afford they a nanny. Need, I, no, I think that, they, uh, I think we ought to, I think we ought to here to address the, uh, all these lovely, lonely old women in this, you know, whose husbands have died, are sitting in their house Why watching telly Why do they want to start looking after kids? They want to lead their own lives. Getting the community back Why? together. Why? they want to lead their start own lives? Start helping, I mean, these Why? things you, are You know what you're doing? Yeah, you know what you're doing, though? Yeah. You're passing the book again. Yeah, you're, you're, right. you're passing the book. You're, you're saying, children. I have to work, need to work. Types, you're saying that, now, now you're saying, never a OK, single don't person. give it to the nanny, but there's all these old, lonely people. Where are all these old, lonely people? I think the community, uh, everybody's sitting in front of their television on their own. Mind you, it's the government's get, idea get to pay these grannies. Get, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an extremely... I'm not sure. Are you a granny yet, it's Margaret? Not, not. Are you a granny? OK, there's a lonely old person. She's called the Minister for Women, for, for, for children. We, would you... Should we, OK, no, here she is. There's your, here's your lonely old granny. She's called Margaret Hodge and she's a minister. She would throttle you if you suggested she's got to go be paid by the government to look after your kids. I'm not no, bringing no, the good. government into this. But you just Let's them. get a community together where okay, some of please. these people who are very lonely are helping out some of these people who are struggling, there. single mothers, who can come in, they can have a okay, tea Margaret together. To that. Let Margaret very quickly, Margaret. We want, to, we want to encourage community, we want to encourage uh, strengthening communities, we want to encourage choice. And I do think there's something wrong in, in, in saying that Jeez. women who don't look after their children all their time don't love them. I yes. think they do. I did. I've got four <laughs> kids. Not I've got no, 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 nobody suggests you don't love them. Phyllis! You're not a lonely old woman, are you? No. But no, that we're not going to pay, but you have been a nanny for a long period of time. How old are you, Phyllis? 91. And how long... <laughs> and you've looked after how many children in all that time? Well, I've had three long-term families and, oh, goodness knows how many others. As when I retired, I was still active. And you're still and looking after a three-year-old now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to, yes. Do you cope? He's a dear little boy. He's Victoria's. <laughs> this is my last baby. You looked after Victoria. Yes. And now you're looking after Victoria's son. I'm trying to, help, trying to help her. I can't do everything for her. You but do I'm your best. Trying. I'm what? doing my best. There's, there's millions she, of... She rings me up and asks my advice. Who Victoria does? Victoria does. And what do you, okay, what do you say to her? What Give that advice. There's millions of young women watching. Some of them want this respite that our friend there who's creative and says she needs to work once. What kind of adv general advice would you give to mothers about bringing up their children? What kind of advice? Mm -hmm. Well, really and truly, it, it, it just boils down to plain common sense. Oh, well, there you are. And you don't have to go to university to get that. We're all supposed to be born with it. Use your common sense, take care of your kids and yourselves. If you'd like to join Robert in a programme about big families or another programme about sexual harassment, call him now on 0990 200 567. Firstly, do you have lots of children? Is it difficult to cope? Are you depending on state benefits? Were you brought up in a big family? Didn't you get enough attention? 
Secondly, have you been accused of sexual harassment? Do you think women take it too seriously? Have you been sexually harassed at work? Has it affected your career or your relationship? Call now. Will there be wedding bells for Charles and Camilla? And should Glenn Hoddle resign? Two of the talking points for Vanessa next this morning on BBC One. And that's followed by real rooms in Leamington Spa, turning a front room into a reading room at 11 o'clock. Then Ainsley has advice for two volunteers whose partners recommend... Uh, no, no. Smooth talking rat bag.